Hey guys, Young Bullet with you, and what I wanted to do today was our first look and should you buy video on the Argo Raft. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this straight to flight ready ship, it is a cargo hauler from Argo, uh, and that's why it's as orange as it is. <laughs> uh, it's a good looking ship, it's very industrial. I appreciate the look of Argo ships in general just because I feel like there's a certain realistic nature to how they've been designed and what they are. They're very functional. Um, what makes this interesting as a cargo hauler is that it carries 96 SEU. It's really meant to kind of live in between the Freelancer Base and the Freelancer Max as far as the cargo carrying ability. But if you want a more specific analog, the uh, Constellation Andromeda uh, carries uh, 96 as well. Uh, they do it in slightly different ways. Uh, what's attractive about this ship is the ability to carry three of these large cargo containers. These are 32 SCU apiece, and these are going to be standardized sizes that you'll see on the cargo decks and space stations, as well as on ships like the whole sea and above. Uh, and what that means is, is you basically land, you pick up your cargo in three batches, and then you're able to take off. That doesn't necessarily drive with the current state. Uh, you know, the game today just kind of magically loads and unloads cargo, but that will be something that changes in the future uh, as we actually see loading times becoming a factor. So only loading three things is going to be significantly faster than loading 96 individualized items. Overall, ship design is very industrial. It's very practical. Uh, you can see that you've got four sets of thrusters on the sides of the ship. Uh, it does come with a VTOL mode, and when they point down, the ship does uh, kind of vertically strafe alarmingly fast, so something to be aware of when you pull one of these out of a hangar so you don't bash yourself uh, on the doors before they've actually opened. Uh, aside from that, you have a remote turret on the top that's operated from the co-pilot seat that has two size 3 M5As on it. Uh, decent armament there. Uh, there are two more hard points on this that you can add weapons to later that are actually pilot controlled. Um, those are not on the ship where things stand today. Uh, on the forward side of the ship, you do have a docking collar. I like the forward facing from the pilot controlled perspective of getting it lined up effectively. And then on the underside of the ship, you also have a elevator that will take you all the way to the ground and up to the second then first levels of the ship. So with that in mind, um, let's just take it on a quick little spin. Um, I wanted to show you that uh, it is kind of a pig to fly. Uh, as far as the roll, you can see it is taking a long time to go. Uh, it has a lot of drift in its response rate to turn back the other way. Uh, the story for yaw and pitch is not a whole lot better. So this is not a ship that you should expect to be do doing dogfighting with. Uh, it does have relatively uh, high powered afterburners. Um, so you'll notice that you get up to speed relatively quickly, which is good for fleeing. Uh, and you also have the ability to maybe change directions a little bit quicker by applying that thrust. Uh, some of the problem there is if you noticed on the left hand side, there is significant burnage of your fuel. Uh, you do drop fuel uh, pretty quickly as far as your boost fuel. Uh, it does recharge in a relatively good uh, time frame. Uh, but it's still not really an ideal experience for running out of fuel as fast as you do as far as the boost uh, and kind of that engine capacity to be able to manage that. Uh, one really interesting thing is we're on the topic of fuel. Um, it does currently have 2000 or 27,585 for its quantum fuel capacity. Um, that's roughly um, five times what the Freelancer Dur has. So when you talk about the ability for long hauling, uh, it is going to be um, you know, really significantly better than the freelancers who one of the competitors are. Now, if you compare that to an entirely different class of ship, like the, um, uh, you know, like the, uh, the Hercules, the Hercules has 88,000. Uh, so, but again, you're talking about a much larger ship there with a much larger capacity. Uh, when you look at what the Caterpillar has, for example, I believe that comes in at 11,000 for your quantum fuel capacity. So you're over double that in the raft. So it is a ship that appears to be meant for long hauling. And especially when you start looking at the interior of the ship, you'll see that you've got some amenities to really allow you to survive longer term. Visibility in here, pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit deceptive because much like the Hammerhead, you've got that underslung cockpit. So you kind of lose all the visibility above you. Uh, it should make landing a little bit easier because you have visibility from the front of the ship and you know exactly how far you can really pull forward. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of the seat and we'll do a quick tour of the inside. I guess before we do that, let's hop into that remote turret that the co-pilot has access to. Um, this again is where you're going to be able to get into the turret on the top. It is remote turret, two size threes. Um, overall, you've got pretty good coverage in a very responsive turret. 
Um, you will notice though that the underside of the ship is very much unprotected and without a lot of other weaponry options you need to be careful about where you're positioning your turret gunner especially with a slow roll you're not going to be able to really react to things effectively um, so even though the you know information on this ship says that you've got heavy armor. Um, this is not a ship that is going to survive for a long time taking a pounding from others if you stay in an engagement. You need to use the turret to kind of create space and you need to get out of there because it, you're just going to be uh, kind of a sitting duck without escorts, which is something I would highly uh, you know, suggest that you bring along. So looking at the rest of the cockpit, um, yeah, it's not a lot more here to see. You've got the door panel here with the controls, which is a nice touch. Uh, you've got some computer blades in here, which I don't know if it's going to be the what's just kind of rule the cool visual stuff or if this will be uh, more functional in the future. You kind of come back to your middle area, which kind of gives you different options for where you go in your ship. Uh, you have the elevator that I showed you, which will take you down to the ground level or up to the top. Uh, we will go a different way to show you the ship a little bit better. Uh, you also have over here the airlock entrance on the ship. You come in and then you get a control panel over here to open or close that airlock. Uh, and that's how you know other ships or station landings will take place is uh, right there. So you got a quick, which I really appreciate, quick in and out of the ship into the cockpit, uh, meaning that your time to EVA and get moving is pretty, pretty fast. Again, you've got the orange themes that really consist of the ship. And here's where you have the kind of crew quarters, the living area. You've got two bunks, nothing here is really fancy, but it is well thought out. Uh, you've got the kitchenette, the drink makers, the uh, trash receptacle. Uh, so you can see how you can maybe keep your crew or two alive. You've got some areas here for eating. You've got a window that'll let you see the back of your cargo just for you know visibility perspective. Uh, and then you've got two lockers here that don't currently open. They kind of have this weird little glitch where they almost start to open, but nothing really happens. Through here, uh, you've got the bathroom. Uh, you do in here have the good old toilet, uh, so you've got a retractable toilet. You also have a sink that you can open, uh, and that's where you will live in there, uh, or not live in there, unless I guess you've had too many torpedo burritos. Uh, the door frost or the glass is a little bit frosted for privacy, but not that much. I uh, got a couple of uh, locker sets here for armor, EVA suits. Uh, you've got a weapons rack over here uh, for long arms, small arms, supplies, whatever you may need. Uh, and then once you head upstairs, you're really going to be in the area where you're more focused on components. Uh, so we can kind of call this your engineering area. Uh, immediately off to the right, you have a really nice overview, kind of like on the back of the Starfarer. Um, this is where you're going to have some of the control options for your cargo, so lower uh, and raise. Uh, the ship also does come with a tractor beam, and this is where you'll be able to operate that to help with your loading and unloading of cargo, uh, especially since we start talking about the... Uh, 32 SEU being kind of that standard size and being on the whole season above, you could see how this ship could potentially be something that's used to unload uh, ships that are unable to land on planets uh, when they're fully loaded as opposed to using something like an Argo cargo, which would take an eternity. Uh, heading back in the ship, you do have the component rooms. Uh, some of these doors open, some of these doors don't, depending on what's currently in there. So there's a jump drive. Uh, over here, we have a power plant. Uh, you know, they're kind of on both sides, so I'm not going to go through and open all of them. Uh, back in the engine room, you can see where you've got some of the turbines that are spinning and kicking off steam for some nice effects. You've got additional uh, control panels and doors that you should be able to open and interact with. Uh, and then here's where that lift uh, that we saw before will actually take you up and down uh, between the decks if you decide not to use the ladder and kind of your crew changing area. So. That's kind of the first look at this ship. Um, we will go ahead and jump into some imagery for it and talk through the Q&A that they released and then get to the overall should you buy recommendation on this video. So now that we've taken a good look at the ship, let's talk in a little bit more detail about the ship and this sail. Current pricing has the raft or the reinforced advanced freight transport available with LTI war bond price of $110 or since the IAE event is going on, you get 10 year insurance with standard sales at $125, which is honestly a little bit less than I was expecting from this ship. There are four paints, including the standard or Argo orange, which I always appreciate. Uh, the ships just look industrial and attractive. Uh, but then you have some variants of gray and a white polar skin as well. 
Now, one of the biggest selling points about this ship is what I would also consider to be one of the greater uncertainties about the ship, which complicates the value proposition. And of course, I'm talking about hauling three 32 SCU uh, containers. The idea here is that you're able to just do the job of picking up three containers and then you're off, as opposed to having to load 96 individual SCU of cargo and getting them loaded up, which we know comes with time or will in the future. We know that there's going to be loading times in the future. We don't know what those are going to look like. You know, are we saying that having these three boxes is going to net you a time savings of 10 or uh, 150%? We just don't know. But what we do know is, is how much you can carry in the raft. And when it is less than ships like the Taurus or the Max or the whole B, you then have to consider the role a little bit further to understand how you're going to make money back that you would from having higher cargo totals uh, with a larger cargo hold. We also know that you can fit these 32 SEU cargo boxes in a freelancer. However, you're not going to be fitting two of them in a max, for example, because of the sizing and the configuration and the double cargo hold area. And the Q&A states that it's going to take longer to get them loaded on the freelancers and others because of the narrow entry points, which kind of hints at alignment complications and the rafts cargo cab uh, and tractor making this a simpler task. If the intention of this ship is to make a bunch of short runs within a system, and if the savings of time is significant, meaning maybe 30% or higher, then it doesn't suffer from the lacking cargo of higher option ships. But if the intention is to go long range, and maybe through multiple systems, then not going the traditional long haul model, taking every last bit of cargo, knowing that you have a whole lot of non-productive trading time when you're spending that in travel, then the value doesn't really hold up well. And that's why I think the intention here is more focused on in-system mission types, really about grabbing cargo, traveling, dropping, picking up more, returning, rents, and repeat. I also think that this ship is going to have to benefit more from trading missions. Things like grabbing these crates off of the whole series, using the tractor beams and hauling them to their final destination's planet side, using the large VTOLs to get the job done. Or even better yet, getting a mission giver asking you to make a two-way run. That time savings um, that also has a mission payout versus traditional commodity pricing model kind of makes a lot of sense for a ship like this. For commodity trading, I think there's a lot of risks and uncertainties. One, you don't know how much of any commodity is available before you leave. So you are bringing this standard cargo container with you and then you still have to open it up and fill it up box by box. Then you kind of start to lose on some of the value of what this ship adds, though since they state you can access the boxes from the exterior of this ship, my assumption is that is how it's going to work. You basically just are gonna manually load them into the three standard containers you bring with you. There's also the question that we've been asking since the whole series came out about the security of exterior held cargo. Is it easier for pirates to grab it? Can they need knocked off and you be essentially become a pinata? There's a lot of questions about that that we just don't have to deal with yet. The ability to carry more cargo and have better offensive and defensive ability in the other ships kind of leaves this one behind in a commodity trading model, which I see as needing to be more dynamic, meaning there are better options. I do think though that long distance high value trading on this ship could be something to consider. You have a crew of two, the quarters to support that, and an ability to potentially run for long periods of time based on the huge quantum tank. And you can keep earning while your other partner is logged off. So if you have a high degree of trust and coordination with somebody else, which is important, it could do that job incredibly well. I love the design of the Argo aesthetic, um, you know, but I do find some strange issues with the end product from an overall design perspective. If the intention, as I mentioned, was to focus on multiple short runs, then the excessive space used for crew quarters is likely overdone. And considering it already looks like you could fit a fourth container on this ship if you squeeze them a little bit closer, um, you could certainly do that more if you had less crew area to contend with. So I think there's a little bit of an identity crisis with this ship, um, but nothing that really breaks it, just adds a little bit of confusion. And until we get to a further point in development, I'm not really sure we'll have a whole lot of clarity on why things are the way they are. So now we get to the challenging part, the should you buy the raft portion of this video. 
And I say it's challenging because the ship is relying on a design that we just don't have in place yet. And we need specifics there to apply to an operational model to understand the value that this will provide. I alluded to it earlier, but if the time savings are significant, then the value of the raft skyrockets over some of the others. But I think for the price that you're paying and for the cargo that you're carrying, the value favors other ships that have more utility looking at the current state which is why we have to extrapolate a little bit outward. Regardless of cargo ability, it all comes down to the dollar, or the equation that I really use for almost everything that I do with a money-making endeavor in a game, which is the UEC earned per hour or per minute, depending on how long I'm operating. If carrying less cargo, but spending significantly less time loading, means that you're able to accomplish a set number of runs and you come out ahead, this has proven its value. That also means here though that the value is likely dependent based on the time that you have available to play and how things turn out. For example, if you're the, I only have time to do one cargo run because I have to spend time with my family and get work done and all that, that type of player, then getting the most cargo on that one run is going to be your best bet regardless of the loading time, unless it's drastically different, and then the raft is probably a pass for you. If we see that the raft is a quick load, go within system, unload it, return with cargo, and repeat, then it's a great option, assuming that we have missions to support it. I'll do a little prognostication and say that I have faith that the cargo missions uh, from the givers at Cargo Decks and the introduction of the whole sea and above will mean that there are going to be plenty of ways to, for this ship to provide its value in the near future. Additionally, the cargo reduction isn't really that drastic over some of the other competitors. 96 is still a good number. So even if the benefit is minor in time that you gain, the earning potential isn't that less. Plus, the fact that you have the tractor beam ability to unload the whole ships, and I think at a minimum, you're close to a break even uh, with, while being you know, a really high upside with a little bit of risk. I see this ship traveling with a whole series ship to help unload it as part of an operational uh, or an organizational operation. Even having them fly ahead and getting staged so they could be prepped to break out and manage tasks more efficiently than an Argo cargo could because, you know, it's an Argo cargo. At the end of the day, it's a well priced ship with a solid value prop, assuming things plan out the way we expect them to. And as long as you're only wanting to do cargo, not trying to squeeze things like exploration or bounties out in the ship as well, it's a good purchase. Not a ship I would recommend for single ship owners though, unless cargo really is your passion. And even then, I think there's some more well rounded options that'll suit you better. I give it a solid thumbs up with a big old caveat that we don't really know how things are going to end up with the development. So that's the video on the raft. I hope that helps give you a better idea on the ship that's out now, a little ahead of its time. If you haven't already, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we're about to do a very big ship giveaway once we hit 50,000 subscribers and also consider backing the channel financially on YouTube or Patreon. Other than that, stay tuned for a lot more content coming your way soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.